The 1977 American Motors Jeep CJ by Monogram, coming up next on Monster Hobby's Model Car Garage. Hello everybody and welcome back to another amazing model car unboxing video as today we stand in front of our American flag which means it's American Motors time once again and we're going to look at the amazing 1977 American Motors CJ7 Jeep. This is an amazing model kit and usually we are going to take a look at some of the old box arts but I found out this is actually the Mork and Mindy Jeep. Nanu nanu! <laughs> Anyway, speaking about shows from the 70s, there you go. Nothing's more 70s than Mork and Mindy. But at any rate, we're going to take a look at this great amazing kit in just a minute. So let's go down and see some of the old box arts and then we'll get right into our review. And now we wind our clocks all the way back to 1977 as we check out the Monogram 2-in-1 Jeep CJ7. This edition of the Jeep came out in 1993 by Monogram Models and includes a version for building the off-road or the Suburban. This Jeep is a skill level 2 model kit designed for the intermediate builder. As we lift off the lid of our box, we immediately see all our plastic parts, as well as this great catalog picture from 1993. Here we have our glass, our chrome, the blue body, the instructions, and then our components like the roof and the door, as well as all our seats and everything else that's cool in here. And there we've got our engine. We also have our wheels and the suspension components, as well as some other amazing Jeep parts, and then down here is our decal sheet. Here we have our instruction sheet from the Monogram Jeep CJ7, and I bought this a very long time ago, February 1st, 1995, at a place called Price Club for $6.95. And if you were to get this model kit today, it would at least be $38 Canadian. The instruction sheet unfolds just like a map, and on the front here we have a nice little paint chart as well as the symbols we need to understand in order to build this model kit. Our model kit includes this amazing AMC engine which is of course universal to both versions of this kit, the only difference being is the two air cleaners. So first off we have this off-road air cleaner for the off-road version of course, which does not have the snorkel tube like the stock suburban air cleaner does here. You have your choice of using one or the other, but the kit is basically the same for the engine. Panel 2 shows our engine being glued into the frame. And once that is done in panel 3 we get our differential with our front springs and drive shaft, as well as this plate, the tie rod, our license plate, the front bumper, and our shock absorbers all being glued in place. Panel 4 shows the assembly in the back end of our Jeep with our rear axle, the plate, shock absorbers, a skid plate in the center of the frame, as well as our bumper and our rear exhaust. Panel 5 shows our wheel assembly and here we get one, two, three, four wheel pieces which all go together. Be careful not to get glue in here or your wheels will never turn. And then they all go onto the end of the axle. Panel 6 shows our radiator and radiator shroud being glued into the front of the body as well as the firewall and our brake cylinder. Our Jeep includes an opening hood that has a hinge on it and this is all held into place on the underside of the cowl with this nice retainer plate. Panel 8 shows the dashboard and windshield of our Jeep. You get these nice windshield wipers, rear view mirror, the clear windshield, pedals, dashboard, the steering wheel, and a CB radio. What else could be more 70s? Next up we have the body with all the components going on there like the back panel, the supports for our roll bar, the seat in two pieces for the back, and the same for the front with our buckets, the battery top, and our headlights and reflectors all going together on the body. Panel 10 shows our completed body being mounted onto the chassis and all the components you need in between, such as the gearbox and steering column, and the winch front and back, as well as winch plate. Panel 11 shows our completed dashboard and windshield assembly, being glued to the back end of the cowl. 
This completed assembly then gets attached to the body in panel 12. Panel 13 shows our hood latch support going in, and I do believe this one you can actually swing down out of the way to drop the hood. Panel 15 shows the assembly for our doors and our roof with all the glass and the antenna. These are used on the Suburban. And this is how you build the off-road. You add in these fuel tanks onto the back, as well as this spare tire mount. Then you add in the additional supports to the roll cage, as well as this cool top with the road lights and a license plate. And this panel here shows the differences between the Suburban, so you can have it either with the top off or the top on. And you note how the roll bar just comes up in behind here. Whereas in the off-road, there are no doors on this, and you've got this full complete roll cage. With the instructions out of the way, we can now look at our plastic body here. And as you can see, this is all molded as a one piece. It is kind of amazing. You get the uh, cover for the transmission in there. Nice little Jeep logo on there on the side. I do believe the AMC logo is on here somewhere. You can see the nice grill in here all opened up, just like the real thing. Now there are some mold marks in the fender wells in here and along the bottom. And again, use your number 16 hobby blade just to get in there and scrape them out. There's also some color uh, markings in here. At one point this was yellow and it's got it written in there with the code. And this one is blue and it's also got, it says blue in there with the code. And a copyright of 1977 from Monogram Models. Again, very nice, but there are some little issues with some sink marks right around the script in here, which again is never quite nice, but maybe it doesn't matter. Oh yeah, I can see the little AMC logo up in here just above the tail lamp. Not sure if it'll pick up on film though. So that basically is our body in a nutshell. Our Jeep model kit consists of five great big part trees, and the detail on here is pretty nice. It's also quite easy and crisp. As you can see, we got our dashboard, firewall, cowl, hood, engine components, and our frame and chassis, as well as the wheels. But let's just bring this up to the camera. Here, I'll flip it around for you. There you can see the nice dashboard with all the gauges and everything, just like the real Jeep. Even includes AMC logo. However, again, there are some sink marks in here, so very carefully with putty, you can cover those over. Then we've got our cowl, and look at that nice vent. The hood, it's got the little latch locations on there, just like the real thing. There's our frame, a nice fuel tank, and then our catalytic converter, which was a big deal back in the 70s. It helps to produce or reduce pollution. <laughs> There's our engine block. It's got the nice frost plugs in the side, as well as the oil pan and the starter and oil filter all molded in, and the transmission off the back. We've got our belts and pulleys, front timing cover, the valve or the cylinder heads, pardon me, our radiator, which is again nicely done. You can see the mesh in the grill, and uh, there's that skid plate. Our next parts tree consists mostly of body panels and interior pieces. But again, nicely done. Look at the pleating on these seats. Very interesting. Let's bring that up to the camera as well. Again, nice texture on there. There's our little tailgate with Jeep stamped into it. The windshield frame looks really nice there. There's the cowl for the radiator. And then we've got our typical AMC steering wheel of the era. Also in Gremlins, I actually have a 76 Gremlin with this type of steering wheel in it. I got a 77 and somebody put a Camaro wheel in there because of course the steering column is shared with GM. So that was kind of neat. There's our shock absorbers and on the back again we have a trademark logo copyright 77 by Monogram. And this goes on that skid plate I do believe. Oh no, that's the back of this seat. But again, very nice detail work from Monogram. Our third parts tree contains our rear axles with suspensions and drive shafts, our seat backs, our intake manifold, a bunch of the hoses, and our exhaust manifolds, as well as that cool looking CB radio. So we'll just bring this back up to the camera. Now again, a complaint I'm having with this kit is there are a lot of sink marks. There's some just in here on that spring where my arrow is pointing. Don't know if you can see that too well. But again, like 
you just need to uh, either fill them or if there's mold marks that are protruding, scrape them down with that number 16 hobby blade. But again, it's a simplistic kit, so the detail is what it is. Our fourth parts tree includes all the components you need for the off-road version of this kit, including these amazing fuel tanks in two pieces, and our top for our Jeep, as well as all the roll bar equipment and the winch. So again, looking at this, very nicely done. Good detail on there. The winch looks cool with, of course, the little windy ropes in there, or the, I guess it's a steel cable, really. The top has the texture on both sides and no sink marks in it. So that's uh, really good. Probably the best piece of this kit. <laughs> Again, nicely done by Monogram. And our final blue parts tree is, of course, for the suburban town version of this kit. And you can see there's our hard top on there, as well as the doors. And the doors have the outer panel. And if you flip it over, there's all the interior panels molded on the other side. Now be very careful with your clippers when you clip out these, that you don't mar it up or bend the frame or something like that. You can see some mold marks in here, which again, that number 16 hobby blade. Most efficient. And then you'll have to carefully cut this off and file it down. Then on the back we have the amazing looking AMC latch system, which it was shared with the Gremlin. And uh, there it is, you just un click it here and then swing up the hinge and that would swing up this way. So again nicely done. Underneath there's mold marks in there but very smooth. So there's that last blue component. Here we have the parts tree that makes up all our clear components and unfortunately Monogram never put this in a separate bag so there are spots where there's a little light scraping which I'll have to polish out. Interestingly enough, there are no red components or clear red components in this kit, so you're going to have to paint these rear tail lamps with something like Tamiya Transparent Red or Tester's Stoplight Red Enamel. Next up we have the Chrome, which of course is always my favorite component of the kit. And here you get the stock air cleaner as well as the little bell one for off-road, a couple of the lights, and more light backings than our mirrors and our license plates as well as these really cool looking chrome wheels. Now remember the fifth one that's open here is actually for the back tailgate and again as you can see these are very nicely done. You can see all the wheel bolts in there. Excellent work. The chrome is very nice and clean on this kit. It doesn't have any wrinkles or anything anywhere. So again, this should all enhance the beauty of your Jeep. Next up, we have our tires, and these are Goodyear Tracker ATs. Now, I'll let you in on a little secret. The only part of this kit I actually started to work on were these tires, because <laughs> they're really nice. So you're not going to get this blue lettering in here, sky blue lettering, but this is a tire I wanted to use as a spare on the back. And I did not sand the tread on this because I wanted it to be like a brand new tire. But check that tread out anyway, it's really nice. And uh, on the other Tracker GT tires here, I actually did sand them down. So you can see that it's a little rough. There we go. Yeah. Again, very nice tires, very thick and very well detailed. Now you can tell that your model kit came from the 90s when you find graphics in it like this. This of course is sort of the end of the 80s graphics and the beginning of the 90s. And here we have a license plate that says Lasto 1. So I guess this model was built to Lasto. And that completes our look at our 1977 2-in-1 Jeep CJ7 by Monogram. Well, I hope you enjoyed that amazing review and look at our Jeep CJ7 from 1977. Nanu, nanu! <laughs> anyway, if that was uh, cool enough for you, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. And uh, don't forget to check out our new model kits. This one, of course, is one of mine from my own collection, so I'm not selling it. But I do get new stuff in all the time, so don't forget to check us out at www.monster-hobbies.ca to see what's new in stock and to let us know what you might like to get. And until next time, 
Nanu, Nanu.